so good afternoon good afternoon actually it's not a good afternoon because our technical director has just admitted that they're all liars and they're all waffling a professional waffler this guy uh, i'm going to go through every single word that this professional waffler has um has come out with today to have the cheek and audacity to go and sit down with jeff shreves on sky sports and openly admit that we have not got a target for league finish this season is a sackable offence, in my opinion. Absolutely disgraceful. The cheek, the audacity, the arrogance of this guy. Yeah, it's mad. This guy's getting paid millions of pounds a year to do this job, by the way. Millions. He's got to be on at least two million quid a year. And he's sitting there with some smug little look on his face, telling the world that, oh, no, we don't look at top four. We don't look at top six. It's not about top eight or ten. We're just... You know, we just want to get the squad together and build the foundations. I'll tell you what, mate, build the foundations by leaving and getting somebody in who knows what they're doing. Yeah, That's, and get a manager in that knows what he's doing. That's the foundations. I am so angry, man. Seriously, so angry. I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can for two reasons. Number one, I'm angry. I don't want to go off on, well, I'm probably going to go off on one. And uh, number two, I want to go down the beach. Uh, happy Saturday, guys, in the Ray Parler voice. Mm. Cheers, guys mugs the whole club stinks yeah and i'll tell you something yeah for anyone who hasn't watched this interview i'm going to read out every single word of it yeah and just listen and smell the arrogance of this guy you can smell him a mile away disgusting man the audacity anyway i'll come back to some comments in a minute i want to get through this whole transcript before uh, i come to comments but i'm going to read the whole article out with arsenal bottom of the premier league technical director edu gave a rare interview oh we're honored we're honoured to Sky Sports and talks about the club's maligned transfer policy, Mikel Arteta and more. The Gunners have endured the worst start to a league season in 67 years. <laughs> worst start to a league season in 67 years. That in itself should be sackable offences for every single one of them. I remember when Unai Emery was here and I keep harping on about Unai Emery because there's no point comparing this manager or Emery, to Arsene Wenger. He was in 20 flipping years, yeah? And he actually won multiple trophies. So you're out the equation for now. You've had a pass. Don't even start me on him. He was talking the other day as well. Don't even get me on him. But the easiest comparison to make with this manager is to the manager that was here for relatively the same amount of time, right? The fallout from Unai Emery's reign of... Oh, he hasn't got a playing style. Oh, we conceded 25 shots against Watford. Oh, we haven't got a style of play. Oh, we don't defend. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something, mate. Unai Emery didn't have us on our worst league start for 67 years. He didn't break records going back to 1902 or whatever season it was. Yeah, he wasn't making his own records, yeah? So when people want to sit here and defend this fraudulent bastard manager of ours, another arrogant bastard, by the way, who wants to sit there... Oh, yes. Well, it's a process. It's a process. The only process is you two are finessing us along with Vinay. Let's not forget him as well. He came out with the PR the other day. Yeah. And all three of them are colluding together to absolutely destroy this football club. Yeah. How dare you sit there and say you ain't got a target? Ivan Tony, big up to you, my guy. Proper footballer, proper baller, proper elite attitude. Man got interviewed about a month and a half ago. Just got promoted with Brentford. Oh, uh, Ivan, where would you like to finish this season? What's your target for the season, mate? Uh, my target's to win the title. Man plays for Brentford, yeah? We've got our manager sitting in a press conference the other day saying he hasn't got a target, yeah? We've now got Edu saying, well, we haven't got a target. So what? It's just, we just wing it and sit here and just go, yeah, cool, it don't matter if we're sat bottom. It don't matter if it's the worst league start in 67 years. Everyone will lap it up anyway. They'll all go out and buy the next drop that Ian Wright gets wheeled out on. Oh, yes, back where we belong. Back where we belong. Yeah, where we belong was the T-shirt. Man standing there proud as punch. Where we belong. We're bottom of the league, mate. Absolute disgusting, man. Scandal. Absolute scandal. I'm sick and tired of them. Anyway, let's carry on. Oh, dear. Seriously, breathe, Gunner. Breathe. Anyway. Uh, we prop up the table. Yes, the worst league start in 67 years, propping up the table, and have they have come under fire for their perceived quality of their signings, not just this summer, but across a number of years at the Emirates. It was barely two seasons ago the club missed out on Champions League return by a solitary one point. 
and were runners up in the Europa League. Yes, we was. And that was deemed not good enough by all of these fans. But anyway, let's continue. While this year they are without European football of any sort for the first time since 95. Oh, look, another record. Edu, who played for the Gunners between 2001 and 2005, or well, you can say played. I think Kalazanax played the same amount of games as him. Um, so, yeah, bench player at best. Uh, returned two years ago in his present role. And here gives Sky Sports his and Arsenal's defence in an exclusive interview. Big up Jeff Shreves. He stuck it on him with some of these questions as well. I would have gone personally a lot further, but Jeff's got a toe of the company line. <laughs> so Jeff asked him, what can you tell me about Arsenal's transfer window and the thinking behind it? The club has spent the most money in the Premier League and Arsenal fans are underwhelmed. Edu's reply, yes, I understand the reason, but firstly, they have not seen the team playing together yet. Right. That's the that's the thing that he keeps saying throughout this, by the way. Uh, that's not uh, that's one of the reasons. But I think we have to see the wider context than just to see the money around it. Yes, of course. So don't look at the money we've spent because that's irrelevant. We just have a look at some bullshit PR that we're going to pedal to make you forget about how much money we spend. Wanker. Um, we signed six players who are hung under 23. Well done. Well done, mate. Should we get the party poppers out? Woo! Yes, let's get the bunting out. Idiot. Yeah, which means a lot in terms of our planning. There is no planning, mate. Normally, people like to just see one window in one window. So I have to say it is a bigger picture. Of course it is. Because you lot are lowering the standards of my football club to the point where you go and buy a load of kids so then you can dress it up as a youth project, you fraudulent fucks. Yeah, seriously, man. Bastards, a lot of them. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, so I have to say it's the bigger picture and we started planning this squad a few years ago in terms of consolidating the team to try and get a better foundation. Well, if you want to get a better foundation, go and get a better management structure first and foremost. Go and get a better manager who can manage the team properly and stop buying bang average crap players for over the odds money, mate. How about that? Yeah, I reckon. I'm not even saying this just for banter. I actually reckon every single person in this chat could have done a better transfer window than this lot this summer. And then he continues, if you remember, in that period, we renewed Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Mar Martinelli a year ago with the intention to get that kind of base in the team. What does that even mean? In a one-year period, we've signed 10 players and seven of the 10 are under 23. Well done, mate. Is this a kindergarten? Yeah, well done. Five of the seven are under 23s as well. Uh, five of the, sorry, let me say that again. We renewed seven players in this period and five of that seven we renewed are also under 23 as well. Why did we do that? I'll tell you why you did that, Edu. Because more people will buy into a youth project than if you serve up Madison and Basuma and Hussein Awa and Aarons or Lamptey, yeah, or Calvert-Lewin or, I don't know, maybe an even better striker up front. Because then when this fucking manager is sat 12th at fucking Christmas and the fans are like irate and going nuts, you will have no choice but to sack him, yeah? But whilst you're sat bottom, yeah, and it's at rock bottom, you can dress up a youth project and say, well, there's a clear plan and you'll get all the fucking PR puppets, Gunner Blog, um, Ornstein, Benj, Watts, Wheatley, Wheatley's mate, fucking, what's, it, what's her name? I can't even remember, yeah? Like, that's how you will do it and you will finesse every single person in this fan base and the majority of people go, well, I can see a clear, I can see a clear change in transfer policy this summer. Yeah, of course you can, because now it means they can keep everyone in a job longer. Seriously, man. Yeah, seriously. Anyway, let's carry on. Why did we do that? Uh, because we have a reason to try again to create a good foundation. And then one day, maybe we are going to sign one or two players only. Oh, wow. One day we might be able to sign one or two good players. Wasters. But after that, it's impossible to sign one or two players because of what we have to do. And we have to do a lot. What does that even mean? Yeah. We have to balance the squad better. Uh, no shit, Sherlock. We have to recruit the players with the right characteristics. Yeah. The right characteristics. You mean yes men. Yeah. Like Granite Xhaka. Uh, yes, boss. No, boss. Three bags, full boss. Oh, here's a new contract on more money. You can play every week. You say yes. Martin Odegaard. Yeah, seven years at Madrid, played 11 games. You're telling me that geezer's good enough for Arsenal? Get in the bin. 30 million quid. He ain't worth 30 quid. Yeah, passes backwards more than forwards. Seriously, you lot have all been finessed. Yeah, I don't fall for this crap. 
Seriously, let's carry on. Uh, we have to recruit players with the right characteristics and the right profile to make the squad better. Well, we've definitely not done that this summer. More solid and much more consistent because last season we suffered with consistency. Uh, well, hello. Um, we replaced Odegaard with Odegaard. Xhaka with Xhaka. Um, spent 24 million quid on a backup goalkeeper. We bought Sambi Lukonga. We're going to come to him in a minute because he actually mentions him as a backup, by the way. Um, because Xhaka and Party are the main guys. Um, who else did we buy? Tavares, uh, backup. Um, so where where's this got any better, mate? Where's the starting eleven got better? Oh, it hasn't, has it? Of course. Jeff Shreves then went on. It's a it's clear there's a shift in Arsenal's policy in terms of buying young players that have a value in the future, right? Let me stop you there, Jeff, right? Because I like you, Jeff Shreves, right? I do like Jeff Shreves. I think he's all right. I will come back to all these comments and super chats and all that in a minute, yeah? Right. But this is what really, really, really winds me up. Yeah. Young players that have a value in the future. Why are we looking to buy players to sell them? Surely we should be looking to buy players that help us win a fucking league title. Right. Yeah. Not to sell them in the future. But anyway, let's carry on with what Jeff shared. shared. Jeff shared. Uh, I, ain't, I ain't even had two sips of that yet. Maybe I should. Uh, it might calm me down. Uh, is that because previously the transfer dealings have been very poor? Uh, you have been left with players on high wages with no sell-on value. Uh, that's because you haven't renewed their contracts in time, i.e. Lacazette last year of the contract, El Elneny last year of his contract, Callum Chambers last year of his contract. Uh, who else is there? Eddie Nketiah last year of his contract. I'm sure there's another one. Kalazanak. There's five that are currently in that squad in the last year of their contract. That's why they have no resale value, because the management are clueless. Uh, and like in the case of William, his contract was terminated. And um, has that been a factor in your thinking with the new policy? Edu's reply, yes. If you see that we had 21 players exit over the last year, all of those were terminated or we tried, we tried to sell or we tried to loan with an obligation to buy as well. Well, has Becky B got an obligation to buy? Uh, no. Has Genduzi? I think it's an option, isn't it? Um, as Saliba? No. Um, Joe Willock, we sold. So what have you actually done, mate, apart from rip up people's contracts, which I could have done, yeah, and pay them to piss off? Yeah, unbelievable how people lap this crap up, by the way. Uh, we had to try to clear a bit of the squad and bring in some new faces. They make it sound so dramatic. This is what every football club has to do, by the way. Uh, we had 21 outgoings and signed 10 players in one year. Well done, mate. Yeah, two Europa League finalists of uh 1920 season signed 27 players between them that year and they both got to the final of the Europa League uh Inter Milan one of them Sevilla the other one who ended up winning it uh Inter Milan by the way signed 14 players Sevilla signed 13 Inter finished one point off the top and then last season they actually went and won the league so you can bang on about 21 changes and all that crap what a load of bollocks this is what big football clubs are supposed to be doing Edu yeah yeah but you wouldn't know that because uh you were uh where so where was you before? Oh, you was in a national setup, not a club setup. Of course you was, mate. So you weren't qualified to do it in the first place. Anyway, uh, we have to create it again. And one day, just go and sign one or two players. Jeff's then next question. Uh, the problem with that for many Arsenal fans is, let's say, from the six new signings you've made, probably only two of them go straight into the first team. So how much has this window improved Arsenal's first team? Edu's reply. You see that the strategy, yeah, of course there's a strategy, uh, for every single name, I can explain you the reasons. Cool. Let's go for it then, son. Yeah, let's hear this BS. Aaron Ramsdale, for example, he is a very good football player. Oh, well, maybe we should play him up front then, Edu, yeah? His job is to stop the ball going in the net, mate, which he hasn't done often enough, hence why he's been relegated three times in four seasons, mate. Uh, he has big potential to be a big part of the team in the future. I don't care about future, mate. I've wasted 17 years of my life listening to this crap waiting for you lot to do what's required after smashing our stadium down. Uh, for the future, Jeff said. For the future of the team, Edu's reply, um, what he wants to do is to balance the position and why do you bring him in? What is he chatting about? We already have one player there who plays games, Burnt Leno, but we have to bring in someone to help for the future. Why is not we think for the future, by the way? Football's not a future game. It's a results business now. Why are we the only club that don't get this? Then he went on to um, Tommy Asu. Yeah. Here's someone 
who has come who can come here and play straight away because we loaned out Hector Bellerin uh, to be able to allow space for him to come and feature straight away. That's the plan, but of course it's up to Mikel if he plays. And then you go to Nuno Tavares. He has the same characteristics because we have Kieran Tierney there to play already, and we needed someone to cover him. Um, okay, well, Kalazanak's here, right? Right? Which you didn't get rid of, so now we've got three left-backs, yeah? Divs. Anyway, let's carry on. Jeff. Uh, so, uh, they are, if you like, at the moment, reserves. Go on, Jeff. Stick it on him. You can only really say Martin Odegaard and Ben White uh, would be expected to be first-team starters. So, of the six, only two will improve the team. Edu's reply. We suffered last year because we lost a lot of players and we didn't really have good backups to play games. Well, maybe you shouldn't stop fucking... You should stop loaning them out then, mate. Um, Genduzi, Saliba, Willock, Maitland-Niles. Well, are they, are they not as good as the players we've signed then, yeah? Cool. No worries. Professional bullshit at this bloke. Uh, I believe we need a squad to win games. <laughs> People are actually sitting there today lapping this up. Oh, I can see what Edu is trying to do. Absolute clowns. Uh, we need a squad to be in a good position at the end of the season because it's not just about our first 11. And again, we need a foundation. You're going to hear this word foundation, by the way, for the next six months because that's all these super fans and all these top gooners are going to keep banging on about, oh, they're laying the foundations. Of course they are, mate. They're having your pants down again. <laughs> uh, now let's put it into context, Edu said. For example, in midfield, you have Granite Xhaka and Thomas Party. So for me... And for Mikel, it doesn't make sense to sign another player to be on top of them if they are the ones going to be playing. That in itself tells you all you need to know about this football club. I'll read that again for the cheap seats at the back. Yeah. Now let's put it into context. For example, in midfield, you have Granite Xhaka and Thomas Partey. So for me and for me Mikel, it doesn't make sense to sign another player to be on top of them if they are the ones that are going to be playing. Right, so we're now not allowed to improve our squad with quality signings because we got Granite fucking Jacker in the starting 11. Yeah? Sorry, mate. Yeah? If anyone's back in this, you are a massive issue. Yeah? You are a massive part of this problem. Yeah? So we deliberately didn't go and sign a player ready to play games right now because we have got Granite Xhaka and Thomas Party. Are you having a laugh? That club in West London have just gone and signed Saul Neguez as a fourth choice midfielder. Yeah? Do you think they're sitting there going, oh, well, we can't sign Saul because uh, it'll hinder Kovacic. What is going on here? Genuinely, what is going on here? Because this is taking the piss. I will come back to all these super chats and comments in a minute, but... Listen, nearly two and well, there is two and a half thousand people in it. Firstly, smack the likes up. I want to do this as quick as possible because I just want to fuck off down the beach. This club is a disgrace. Um, and I will come back to comments in a minute. So let's continue. He then continued, Edu. That's why we chose Albert Sambi Lakonga to help them. <laughs> oh, yes, let's get a helper in. The little worker bee that's going to help everybody. It's almost like getting a driver's mate, isn't it? Yeah, they're the drivers in midfield. Um, although Xhaka's in reverse every day. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, party's always injured, so we're going to go and sign a kid that can help them. Fuck off. Yeah, if you go up front, we have Alex Lacazette. Yeah, he's in the last year of his contract, mate. Uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Yep, barely scores goals these days. But Kyle Saka, another one, barely scores any goals. Good talent, but barely scores any goals, but I'll lay off him because he, he looks like he's going to go places. Nicola Pepe, everyone's on his case. Cool, I get it, but for me, I like him. Gabriel Martinelli, Project Youth, ruined under this manager. I want to see them playing together, said Edu. In the number 10 position, we saw a gap and uh, there because we only had Smith Rowe. We needed a number 10 with the same quality to be there, help and play. Where we needed to spend, where we needed to spend big, big money for me and for Mikel was in the centre back position. Yeah, not like we did thirty million quid on a fucking Rolls Royce that's out in Marseille, mate. But no worries, we do fifty on fucking Ben Shite, who can't hit a ball. Well done. Anyway, uh, David Louise was leaving, and this was the one where we needed someone to come in straight away and have an impact on the team with the right profile. <laughs> Fuck me, they dressed this shit up. Um, and what we believe in the short, medium, and long term, we needed. That was Ben Scheitz. Uh, this is why we went there because and signed White to give the squad what it needed. Oh, thanks, Edu. 
cheers, mate. You really helped us. Oh, we're so grateful, mate. You went to Brighton and said, listen, Brighton, we'll give you £25 million over the odds. Yeah, because the lads need help, mate. They need help. We, we need to bring him in. He's the right guy. He fits the profile for the short, medium and long term. Fuck off, man. Seriously. So, Jeff Shreves, do you understand, though, why Arsenal fans would prefer if you say spent 150 million on three oven ready players. Go on, Jeff. Um, who could go straight into the first team and maybe play Premier League, have Premier League experience, um, or certainly first team experience elsewhere. That will improve the team now, right? As you know, right now, the team has not scored goals and has not registered a single point and sits rock bottom of the Premier League. Great questioning. Great questioning, Jeffrey. Cheers, Jeff. Uh, let's continue. Edu. I really understand that, but I'd also like them to understand the reason and the direction we are going as a club. Uh, the direction we're going as a club is fucking backwards, my friend, and all the way to the championship with you and that fucking manager in charge. Anyway, of course, it has hurt for us to be in that situation. We are hurt. I am hurt. Of course you are, mate, when you're sitting on your yacht fucking smoking a fat cigar, you absolute wanker. Uh, but I want to see the team play together. To be fair, we have had three games and I haven't seen the team playing together yet. Right, now I took from this, right, that we've played three games and we've had injuries, yeah? He's going to come on to some other bits in a minute, right? And we've had injuries, yeah? So, off of the back of that, if I was a player that, um, sorry, I've done it again. If I was a player that had played in them first three games, I'd be fuming. So you're saying... You're basically saying, Edu, that you want to see the team play together and we haven't seen them playing together yet. So what you're saying is the players that played in them first three games ain't part of the team then, yeah? People want to sit there and tell me this club's PR is great, yeah? It's great in terms of finessing fucking idiots in the fan base that will believe any old bullshit this club come out with, yeah? But these people can't speak to the media properly, yeah? When somebody sticks a question on them, like Jeff's done, like that woman did to Arteta the other day, the end of press conference, uh, Gail Davis, yeah, she was on Sky Sports, ironically. Well done to Sky Sports, by the way. I cuss you a lot, yeah? The last two times you've interviewed these people, they've been shook. They can't... Uh, 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 fucking get your words out, you bellends. Seriously. Uh, to be fair, we've had three games, blah, blah, blah. So I want to see the sign-ins, um, and I want to see the squad prepare. Well, you've had all season and a pre-season, mate. He needed a pre-season, remember? So maybe if you'd signed the players earlier in the window, you could have prepared, you fucking knob. Uh, all three games we have played have been against Brentford, Chelsea, and Man City. Unfortunately, we've had some difficult moments in terms of COVID and injuries. Oh, my heart fucking bleeds, mate. Not like other clubs have got injuries. Did Kevin De Bruyne not play because he had an injury? Oh, of course he didn't play because he had an injury. You fucking idiot. Yeah. Seriously, like I like the way they've questioned this guy, yeah? But go back on him. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, but Kevin De Bruyne didn't play, mate. Maris and Sterling were on the bench. Yeah, oh, yeah, but then he'd come out with Waffle, and then you go, okay, cool. So maybe you can't compete with Man City. So how did Brentford compete with you then? Yeah, stick it on these people, man. I'd love to sit in a room with this guy, man. I swear. I I'd love to sit and ask this geezer some questions. Yeah, I want to see the play uh, team play together, and let's judge the team when they play together. Then after that, no problem. Then judge us. Uh, how about fuck off? Yeah. I understand the situation we're in is really tough. It's not an excuse, but let's judge the team when they play together. Seriously, this guy's a prick. Uh, Jeff's next question. How much um, is Mikel Arteta on board with the direction the club is going? Because you know any manager is judged on results. Um, if I'm Arteta, I understand you are planning for the future. But if it's a result, if the results don't improve, um, I could go down the road. I could be down the road here. For example, go get me Romelu Lukaku, somebody like that. How much does he understand? Edu, in the in the case here, the case here is we really believe in the players that we have. You keep saying that. Answer the fucking question. Yeah, maybe other people don't, but we do. Yeah. So I'll read that again. The case, uh, the case here is we really believe in the players we have in the squad. Maybe other people don't, but we do. So people like me, People like you that don't believe in this, you're irrelevant because it, he does. Yeah. <laughs> the arrogance. Anyway, maybe other people don't, but we do. If we start to see the squad together, we believe in the squad. I sit with Mikel and we see the squad. We have a striker there who delivers us 25 goals every season. Well, he didn't last season, mate. 
we have another one who delivers 15 to 20 every season. Uh, really? Really? Oh, maybe I've missed these. Uh, so what you're saying is there's at least, what, 40 to 60 goals there from our two strikers. How many goals did they score last season? Yeah, uh, I think we barely managed to score 60 in the fucking league combined, didn't we? Uh, we have two very powerful young academy players in Saka and Smith Rowe, and we believe in them in our squad. Yeah, they barely score as well, funny enough. All right. Anyway, Jeff's next question. As you know, Arteta is under immense pressure right now. Also, your own job has come under criticism. The criticism of you is that you don't, haven't done the job in, in Europe before and that you don't have the European market. Um, you don't know the European market, sorry. What do you say to that criticism? And also, <laughs> what and when will it be where you can be judged for what you have done and your policy at the club? Yes, Jeffrey. Cheers, Jeff. We're drink to that one, my friend. These are some good questions. Ah, there we go. Anyway, keep smashing the likes up. I will come back to all these comments and super chats here. So stay in the chat. Stay watching. If you put a donation in, I will go back and read it. I can go to a different screen and do it. So don't think that I've totally missed it. I will read it. I know you've paid money for it. Um, Edu, I respect all the pressure. I came from Corinthians and then the Brazil national team where I had unbelievable pressure. Of course you did. Um, I understand the fans. <laughs> That's got to be laugh of the day. That's got to be the biggest joke of 2021. I understand the fans. Really? Cool. Okay, mate. If you did, you wouldn't be sitting there undermining us. Yeah. Talking down to us like we're fucking children. Absolutely trying to lie through your teeth to convince people that there's a project when you know full well there ain't. I understand the reason and I accept that, but we need to have a little bit of time to do um, um, to do what we plan to do. I know this type of work and when we are talking about signings and needing patience hurts Arsenal fans a lot, but it is the reality. So basically he's saying, yeah, well, just be patient. And uh, I know it hurts Arsenal fans, but fuck it. Just have to wait a bit longer, lads and lasses. Uh, that's why when I say to you that we have to create a good foundation, there's that buzzword again, and to create a good foundation needs time. Fucking dick. Yeah. How comes Tuchel didn't need time? He didn't have a foundation. He had a fucking team that was fucking all over the place. Ah, oh, dear. Anyway. Uh, but you know, you don't get time in football, said Jeff. Well done, Jeff. I know. But it's why you make the decisions. We believe in our squad now. Okay. Well, if you believe in our squad now, why are you buying players for the fucking future then? You absolute muppet. Yeah. But we believe this squad can be even stronger in the future. Yeah, let's wait another three years. Well done. Cheers, Jeff. Seriously, man. Edu then continued. My job is to think about the short term, but also the long term. How we're going to plan for this kind of journey. Because if we now sign one or two players and we have three or four or five gaps to fill, people are going to look at us and say, guys, what are you doing? You spent a lot of money on certain positions, but what about here, here, and here? This is the same guy who said you can't just wave a magic wand and boom, messy. Uh, well, fucking PSG did. Yeah. The balance is not easy to get, but again, we believe in what we are doing. Of course you do, because you're all nicking a fucking living. Yeah. Lowering the standards. All three of them, all three of them are colluding together with their PR bollocks because they know 95 fucking percent of this fan base will suck it up. Yeah. It's disgusting. I'm going to highlight these bastards every day, man. I'm sick and tired of it. Yeah. Talking about my role, I understand the pressure. I understand the pressure on me, Mikel on the board and the club because the situation we're in is not acceptable. But now is, not, now is the moment for everyone to be together. And I would like to see people step forward in difficult moments and take responsibility. So basically, shut the fuck up, deal with it, and hopefully we get better, is what he's saying. I am responsible for what we are doing. Good. Well, you can fucking resign today then, you wanker. Yeah. Jeff's next question. Do you feel as accountable for the results as the playing and management staff right now? Great question, Jeff. These are some good ones. Uh, we have different responsibility, of course. We are never going to be there to tell Mikel to play this guy or this guy. Of course, it's not because um, it's his responsibility to choose the team or to choose the system and to help make the best decisions in terms of recruitment because we do that together. It's not me, it's not him to be fair, it is we. Because when you go to the board and show the board our plan, of course they have to like the plan and then we go together. Well, I'll tell you what, they can all fuck off as well then. yeah. And then we start to operate. So of course, we all have different responsibilities 
but we have to see everyone as a group and take the responsibility to try and move forward and leave the situation as soon as possible. What does that even mean? Did anyone understand a word of what he's just waffled about? This is what these bastards do. Yeah, they're very good at just spinning. They've been great politicians. Yeah. Jeff's next question. If all the players are fit, what do you think this squad should be capable of this season? Is it top four? Is it top six? What's realistic? Brace yourselves. Literally fucking brace yourselves. I hope you're sitting down. Do not put your fucking remote control through your TV or device. Yeah. I do not want to go for top four or top six or top eight or top ten. I'm really just looking forward to seeing this squad play together. I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone fit. I want to see our squad because I don't see it yet, but I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And I believe, and Mikel believes that this team can have a good season. I'll read that again. I don't want to go for top four or top six or top eight or top 10. Well, good, because we ain't finishing above any of them fucking positions. You seriously. Oh, dear. I'm really looking forward to seeing the squad play together. I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone fit. I want to see our squad because I don't see it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it because I believe, and Mikhail believes, that we can have a good season. Well, what constitutes a good season then? Because you've just said you don't want to go for top four, top six, top eight, top ten. Are you telling me, yeah, that you haven't set a fucking target? Because our manager told us this in the press conference the other day. Oh, we haven't, oh, I don't want to set a target. So basically, there's no pressure on Mikel Arteta whatsoever this season. Is that what everyone's telling me? This club is fucking finished. It is finished. Finished. Accept it. It's finished. It's done. These three bastards have killed this club forever now. They've killed it. Other people beforehand can take a fucking big part of that as well. People before we even moved to the Emirates Stadium. Brace Will Smith, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you know what you fucking did. Yeah, you know what you did. David Dean, I love him, yeah, but he's a massive fucking issue as well, yeah, absolute bullshit, yeah, this cunt, how about you fuck off then, mate, if you talk too much, you talk too much, well, I'll tell you what, I'll block you and you don't have to fucking listen to me, do you, fuck yourself, don't push me today, you absolute waster, about you talk too much, uh, it's a fucking YouTube channel, you dick, let's continue, Ah, oh, dear, Jeff, how difficult is it for the club? I wanted to make this really quick as well, and I've done 32 minutes. I'm hurrying this up. How difficult is it for the club to ask for patience for understanding and also for the supporters to buy into what you are doing here, particularly whilst the team is sat where it is in the table? Edu, it is hard. I'm not asking for patience because it is a word that everybody hates to listen to. There you go. So we're not going to say patience because if we ask you for patience, you don't want it. Yeah, the arrogance. I'm just trying to explain the strategy behind it because when people see just one window, of course, they see it like this. I respect that. But you have to see what we started to do since we've been together. We've tried to clean the squad. You tried to clean the squad. You've signed Rob Holden to a new contract. You signed Granite Xhaka to a new contract, yeah? You brought back in Martin Wodegaard, who weren't fucking good enough in the first place. And then you signed him up, yeah? You brought in Cedric on loan when he was injured. Yeah, that's not cleaning the squad, is it, you fucking idiot? And then you gave him a contract off of the back of that. You then brought in one of your pals, yeah, one of the Brazilian revolution that fucking certain fans out there were calling it. Brazilian revolution, yeah? You then signed another one of your pals in Brazil, yeah, fucking Pablo Marie. Oh, about fucking cleaning the squad. Fucking state of this geezer, man. Uh, as I said, it is 21 exits. That's a lot. Almost a revolution. Fucking hell, he said it. He actually said it. Almost a revolution. Oh, my God. But how are you going to fill those 21 holes? You need time. Well, how, how did fucking, how did Sevilla fill 13 holes in one fucking summer? Yeah. How did Inter Milan fill 14 in one summer? I'm sure Real Madrid have done 15 in one summer before. Yeah. You can't just come in and do it straight away, he said. Well, other teams can, mate. Yeah, so if you you can't, all pack your fucking desks and fuck off somewhere else. Yeah, I don't want to be repetitive, but it's true. How are you going to create a solid foundation when you say, okay, but they are young and uh, they are young, but we have five senior players in the squad and the first 11 in Burnt Leno, Granite Xhaka, Thomas Party, Lacazette and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. What does he mean? Around those five, we have very, very good talented players around them, which we believe in. Maybe people don't, but we believe five guys can lead the team with the youngsters and with the new signings to go to the next step. 
Right, so hang on, let's go back to them names that he mentioned, yeah? Let's go back to them names that he mentioned. All right, okay. So Bernardino, I think we'll be selling him in the summer, so we'll come back to this in the summer. Granite Xhaka's never been good enough. He's now a guy to lead the team. Well, he fucking led us well against Man City, didn't he? Oh, I don't fancy it today, lads. I'll just two-foot someone. Thomas Part is always injured. Alex Lacazette's in the last year of his contract. And our fucking club captain, who's probably not the club captain anymore, because Granite Xhaka probably is, has fucking disappeared for about 14 months. These are the five guys, five guys that are going to lead us forward. Yeah, disgust him. This club is finished at the highest level, mate. I'm telling you. It is absolutely fucking done and dusted. We are done. We are finished. Accept it. Accept it. Let's continue. Um, let's continue. Next summer, we are probably going to sit here again. And then you were going to say to me, you were just signing one or two or three players. Yes. And why? Because we made these kind of decisions to create something for the future. <laughs> I'll give you another example, Edu said. Why are a few clubs around the Premier League just signing one or two players? It's because they've already had the foundations. They already have a team prepared. I'm sorry, but the reality is we don't. Wow. So you've admitted that you're underprepared. Cheers. Another reason you should fuck off. Let's continue. Now you have to create it. That's the reality. Uh, I don't want to be here and try to lie. Well, you've done that for the whole interview, mate. Yeah. What's Arsenal's reality is at the moment, we need to create a solid foundation. If I had a pound, take a shot every time he says founda a foundation. Maybe he's got a bit of foundation on the tart. Yeah. I don't want to see the squad in one season. And uh, I want to see the squad in one, two, three, four, five seasons. That needs a strategy. Yeah. Strategy. Keep hearing this word strategy. And I don't see any fucking strategy at this football club. I don't know why I keep pressing that button. But there we go. Let's continue. Um, anyone, like I said, who's put a super chat in, I will read it, even if it was right at the very beginning. I am going to read other comments out as well. Um, so bear with. Um, Jeff, no one has a 100% record on transfers. You get some right, but you get some wrong. On your watch, William, was that just a mistake that didn't work out? He said that decision on William was to sign someone with experience in a lot of Premier League games and someone who could impact the team now. All right. So what changed this summer then? And now you're going down Project Youth. So, so why was it different last summer then? What, why, why did you need a player to impact the team now when we already had a Bamian playing the same position? Yeah. Pull him up on his lies, man. Yeah. Oh, we've already got Granite Xhaka and Thomas Party, so we didn't want somebody to come in on top of them. Yeah. Because they're going to play. That's what he said five minutes ago. Yeah. So now you're bringing in William to play now, but now you want kids to play now. Can you see the lies of this football club? If you saw the first game of the season away to Fulham, he started very, very well. And every thought, everyone thought, wow, <laughs> this, gun. this guy is a see you next Tuesday. The biggest one, I think, out of the three that I want gone at this football club. I'd actually say he's worse than Arteta. I'd say he's actually worse than Arteta. His arrogance knows no bounds. Uh, but a lot of different circumstances during the season for the squad and for William as well meant we were inconsistent. To be fair, every single player was inconsistent and now we want to be more consistent. Well done. No shit. And then at the end of the season, I came to William and myself and Mikel, how are you? Because I want you to be much more consistent. What is happening? Oh, how are you, William? Oh, I want you to be consistent. Uh, <laughs> And then he mentioned to us that he wasn't 100% comfortable. And when we heard that, we made the decision that we did not want the player at the club who is not 100% comfortable or even 10% with the team. If not now, that's my business to find the best solution. If it's a mistake or not, it's hard to say. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't if our season had been better with everyone being more consistent. But the most important thing is we tried and we tried and we planned and we planned. They're, fucking this geezer's a cunt. Yeah. It really, <laughs> Jeff's next question. It's really clear listening to you what the plan is, the average age, et cetera. But do you accept that ultimately you'll be judged by everyone here on results? He said it's football. We're talking about football. So you have to accept that. Uh, then when people start to criticize us, we are talking about us. Every, uh, and they are talking about us. It's easy to talk about Arsenal today. Everybody wants to be there and everyone wants to talk against Arsenal. Oh, poor Edu. <laughs> Everyone's picking on us, you tosser. Yeah, but we have to accept it and we have to be strong enough to understand it and try to change it. 
how are we going to change it? <laughs> I want to see the players step forward and say, now is the moment to go and play. Well, you've signed players that are not going to go and play, you fucking div. Yeah, I want to improve myself and try to help the club. Mikel has to improve and the coaching staff have to improve. At the moment, we all have to be together. Uh, Jeff's next, next question. It's Arteta's job and his responsibility for the coaching and the way the team plays. But would you say, what would you, but would you say to the owners for your part, look, we're going down the different path here. So we need to back Mikel in terms of patience and support because most managers in this instance would say, we need a quick fix now. If Mikel is going down this route with the club's new philosophy, do you think it's the owner's right to accept that they have to be more patient and more supportive of him and perhaps bad thing uh, results will bring ordinary uh, will be bringing in ordinarily he said we already know 100% what we are doing because we uh, what we are doing because we report to them what the plan is and how we are going to operate the plan and how we are going to do it this season they already know and want to see this squad playing together we want to see them playing together. Mikel wants to see them playing together. Mikel was happy the other day when he had two or three players start training again. Oh, well done. And then we got batted 5 0. Um, he wants to see everyone fit. And I hope without COVID, then it's fair. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at this little gem. He wants to see everyone fit. And I hope everyone without COVID, then it's fair to judge us. Okay, mate. Well, unfortunately for you, you fucking fraudulent bastard. Yeah, COVID is everywhere. It's all over the world, my friend. Everyone in the world has known someone or knows someone that has fucking had it. Yeah. So now we have to wait for this fucking pandemic. Yeah. And this virus to just magically disappear before we can judge him. Unbelievable. This club's finished, mate. Absolutely finished. Keep smashing the likes up, people. And listen, there's three and a half thousand people watching this. Thank you very much. I apologize to anyone who's offended with my swearing. In fact, no, actually, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I'm not apologising. Yeah, I'm pissed off. Um, but smash the likes up. Do subscribe if you haven't. And um, the uh, the pinned comments is my vlog channel. I will be going down the beach after this to relax and fucking unwind. I need it. Um, and the vlog will be out later tonight. Um, I will be coming back to these comments in a minute. There's a few more questions he got asked, I think. Uh, lastly, here we go. Uh, lastly, uh, we are right now, is it difficult times for the club? Where we are, I can't speak today. Where we are right now, is it difficult times for the club? Uh, but would you say you are very happy with the window you've just had? Edu's reply, I am really happy because the plan in which started to execute a year ago, we did. That's what makes me really happy because all the plans, all the steps, all the processes, there you go, I had to sneak that one in, didn't you? Uh, which we put together were executed. Uh, I'm really pleased because it's not easy. Jeff then said, so if the players are fit and the results pick up, we'll start being able to see whether it works. He said, exactly. Um, absolute bastard. How dare you sit there and say, when the squad's fit and we've got no COVID issues, then you can judge us. Who the fuck is this guy? Who are you? Like, who is he? Like, what? Because you, you sat on the bench for the Invincible season. Now you're a fucking, now you're the world-renowned fucking technical director. This is a controlling man, a very controlling man, a very manipulating man. Yeah. The same with Arteta. Yeah. The body language of this guy as well, because I actually watched the interview. He took a, a big gulp most of the way through it. Kept, yeah. I know body language. You don't believe the bullshit you're talking about, Edu. Yeah. You do not fool me. You might fool a 14 year old. You might fool a fucking 20 year old. You might fool a fucking. 18-year-old, you might fool somebody that just wants to fucking blindly back anything this club does that are 40 years old or 50 years old. Yeah, you might fool somebody that lives down the road from the stadium. You might fool somebody that lives in America, mate. You ain't fucking fooling me. Yeah, sick of it. Yeah, these three bastards, Vinay, Edu and Arteta, have colluded together in the last couple of weeks to come out with this PR. Yeah, the, the thing um, Arteta said the other day, yeah, people can see what we're trying to do. And if they can't see what we're trying to do, it's because they don't want to see it. Control freak. Yeah, Vin I come out the other day. Waffle, waffle, waffle. We have to have unity, guys. We have to have unity. We've been in unprecedented times with COVID. And blah, blah. Well, so has everyone else, mate. Yeah? Why is it only Arsenal have to have a long-term process and project? Yeah? Why do we have to dress everything up as a project? Yeah? 
Why does no other team have a process or a project? It's now. Football is a now sport. It's a win now. Don't win. You're sacked. Yeah? Disgusting. Disgusting. Anyway, thank you to everyone who's watched live, man. Fucking the views have been lit. I can't lie. Um, there's not even a thousand likes on this video. That is a disgrace. <laughs> That is actually a fucking disgrace. Over three and a half thousand people watching. Uh, let's go back to um, to the super chats I've missed, and then I'll rifle through some other comments as well. Um, I'm fuming. I'm actually fuming. Can you tell? And uh, I'm going to go and chill in a minute. But let's go back to these supers. Excuse me. Right, where are we? Right, first one, Rich. Big up to you, my guy. Uh, Rich ND. Uh, bruv. Big up, bruv. Lee, Edu is but part of the rot. The trio, Vinay, Edu, Pandemic, Pep, have to go. I am not spending no money anymore on Arsenal. Do you know what? I think I'll join you on that. Yeah, I used to buy all the kits. Yeah, my missus used to buy me all the kits. Um, I used to spend quite a lot of money on the merch. I've bought the Arsenal yellow kit this season. That's the last bit of money they're getting out of me. Yeah, I'm not spending another penny with this football club. Yeah, I refuse. Yeah, yeah, I might still wear my shirts when I'm doing streams and stuff. Like I might wear my Arsenal shirts then. I am not buying another Arsenal kit. Yeah, until this lot fuck off. Um, let's continue. Uh Rowit, thank you for your donation, my friend. Big up Lee. Keep reminding people where we are. Uh, we are Arsenal. Cannot accept PR mercenaries. Curtis calls it a Bitcoin window. So true. Big up Curtis. Big up to you as well, mate. Um, big up to Flo Zanelli, my baby in the chat, boy. Come on. Um, big up, bro, spitting facts on our club. It is finished. I've been telling everyone, been telling everyone, Flo. Yeah, I'm negative, apparently. Uh, Gunner Station, big up to you as well, mate. Uh, translation, this means buy the new merch. <laughs> big up to you. Big up to Kenny Matthew as well. We put a donation in. Didn't put a comment in, but thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. Uh, Mitchell as well. Big up for the generous donation as well, my friend. Thank you. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm just looking forward to next season now. How comes this club is run so bad? We know what to do and what not to do. They're on a salary, but people are getting paid millions to make the right decision. Can't make the right decisions. They want to just lower the time and lower the um, the expectations. Listen, they've wanted Arteta as manager before they wanted Emery in, yeah. But I think coming in after Arsene Wenger, yeah, they needed to go with a more experienced person, yeah, or an experienced person, which is why they chose Emery, yeah. But the first opportunity they could sack him, they sacked him. This bastard's got us on our, our worst starts since fucking 67 years ago. He's broken over 30 unwanted records since he has been at this club. Yeah. And they're still sitting there coming out with all this PR for him. It's an absolute disgrace. It is a disgrace. But they're dressing it up as a project and process. No. The only process here is you three bastards. Yeah. And I hope you fucking watch this video. Yeah. Come and do an interview with me, Edu. Let's see how big your balls are now, mate. Yeah. Come and get on here. To three and a half thousand fucking people watching live and come and have an interview with me, mate. Yeah, because I'll soon ask you some questions that Jeff can't ask you. Yeah, because he's asked to do it professionally. I don't have to be professional. It's my fucking football club. It's their guys, these guys in the chats football club. Anyone at that football club that watches this, get Udo on here now. Yeah, get him on it. I want him fucking on it. Yeah, because I'm fucking sick to death of that bastard. And he is a bastard. And I'm going to keep calling him a fucking bastard. Yeah, that bastard is one arrogant bastard. Yeah, I have a shot every time I say bastard. How fucking dare you sit there and say you have to judge us when COVID, we got no injuries and COVID, fuck off. Bastard. Yeah, bastard. Anyway, let's carry on. Suleiman, my guy, we always end up buying players that no other club is chasing and only our hilarious fans talk them up as if they're the next big thing. That's because 90% of our fan base are fucking retarded, mate. Yeah, most of that 90% probably grew up in the last decade of Wenger making excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse while trousering the most fucking money of any manager in world football. Oh, we can't compete. Well, you are arson because you're getting paid more than anyone. Oh, but we have to sell our players to pay the stadium off. Really? And it used to cost 20 million pounds a year and it was on a 25 year mortgage. So how did we have to sell Van Persie and Adi Bayor and Nasri and Cleb and Fabregas and Vieira? And Henri, how do we get rid of all of them when qualifying for Champions League paid the debt? Where's the money then? Yeah. Then it's, oh, but Chelsea have ruined the market. We can't compete with sugar daddies. Me, me, me. Oh, top four's a trophy. No, it ain't. It's third loser. 
Yeah, so now all you get from these fans is, oh, let's try and get top four. How about try and get the title, mate? Yeah, seriously. Big up to Akash as well. Thank you for your donation. Spurs fan here. I enjoy your honesty on your channel. Vlog channel going great as well. Hope you and the family are doing great. P.S. Spain looks superb. Thank you very much, man. Big up for your donation from India, my friend. Uh, not many Spurs fans on this channel. So, yes, you've done well not to get abused in the chat. I'm only joking, joking. Uh, we're, all, we're all kind over here in the chat. Might not be kind to that bastard Edu, but we have our reasons. Uh, Kenny with another one as well. Kenny Matthew, thank you. Sack Arteta, get a good manager, and maybe he could get the best out of um, all, including Xhaka. Look at Conte and Lukaku, for example. Exactly. People are blind to this, man. They just sit there and go, oh, we're back it because it's a project. Now the people that say to me, as soon as a player signs, oh, well, now he signs, we have to back him. Why? Why do I have to back a player if he signs? If I don't believe that player is any good, yeah, it's now that player's job to convince me he is good. Not just, oh, I'll back it. I'll back it. No. No, 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 no. Same with this manager. When this manager proves to me that he's any good, I'll take back everything I've said for 20 odd months. But he won't. There we go. Anyway, VJ, thank you for your donation. Uh, this is what happens when fags are, fans argue that Ben White is better deal than Varane because of his resale value. Does Edu have the masters in PR and manipulation? Yeah, he also has a masters in fucking waffling and bullshit and arrogance and fucking everything else. Big up to you, VJ. Um, Grant McRoberts, big up to you, my guy. Thank you, mate. Uh, fair play to Jeff. He actually had Edu on the toast. He did, to be fair. And I understand that he couldn't really go too much further because obviously professional setup and all that. Um, big up to Suresh. Uh, by pirated, stream pirated, boycott matches. Um, Lee, call Vinay a Nai, I think that's it. Nai, that means dog in Tamil. <laughs> Go on, my guy. Uh, board owners need to change. David Dean, we need you back ASAP. Uh, thank you for that, man. And um, yeah, just boycott everything. Don't buy, a, don't spend a single penny on this club until they start doing what's required, man. They smashed our stadium down to now go on Project Youth after our worst start in 67 years. Yeah, go fuck yourselves. Yeah, big up to uh, Graylin as well. Thank you for your donation. Sack them all now. They are frauds. And Rich again, thank you, buddy. Uh, from now onwards, I will only buy fake Arsenal merch. Well, I can help you with that because that little pomp's fucking now Arsenal. Yeah with his fake little merchant. Maybe go and follow his account. He might open his website again after he quickly shut it down. <laughs> Wanker. Um, uh, until this lot, the owners and Arteta have gone and they do out. So yeah, mate, listen, at the end of the day, this club is a disgrace. The way they have done what they have done this summer is an absolute disgrace. It's a disgrace. Yeah. They have literally gone from, oh, we need to get back into European Champions League football to, oh, well, the gap, and this is what Vinay said the other day, the gap is too far to just jump straight back in. So it's a work in progress <coughs> and a work in process. So what you're saying is, yeah, if we had signed Madison, Basuma, Husemawa, Max Ahrens, Calvert-Lewin, for example, them five, then brought Genduzi back, then brought Saliba back, then got rid of Bellerin, got rid of, um, I don't know, fucking Joe Willock, yeah, are you telling me that we couldn't push towards top four this season? Because you're chatting shit. Anything to lower the standards. They do not want to win. This football club do not want to win. Yeah, they are not interested in winning a league title. They are not interested in anything other than selling fucking merchandise. Yeah, and getting righty out there on the, on the fucking oh, let's wheel him out. Yes, oh, back where we belong. Back where we belong. Fucking, can you hear yourselves? Yeah, they're all on the payroll. These people stop listening to these people yeah all of these ex-players martin keown yeah martin keown let me just tell you about martin keown yeah martin keown was a fucking good center back back in the day a very good center back back in the day yeah this guy was in teams that won yeah won titles this guy sat on sky sports no he didn't he sat on talk sport the other day a fan phoned in and said get off the payroll start saying it as it is and started sticking it on him yeah. And he went, well, I'm never going to come out and publicly criticize the football club. That's me and you finished, mate. Like, you're done. I don't need to hear your opinions anymore. I don't need that anymore. You've now got no credibility, my friend, because you're not going to publicly criticize the football club if it needs publicly criticizing. Yeah. Well, you're finished then. I don't need to hear your opinions anymore. 
Yeah, because now you're not telling me what you want to tell me. Yeah, you're telling me what you think people would like to hear because you're getting a little fucking pocket of money. Yeah, here you go. Here you go, mate. Yeah, 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 here we go. There's another. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have some more. Yeah, you want some more? Fucking knobs. All on the payroll. Righty, parlor, fucking all of them. Don't listen to these people, man. Who cares if they played for the club? Yeah? Who cares if they played for the club? Yeah? Who cares if they played in great teams for this football club? They are on the fucking payroll, mate. They are not interested in saying it as it is. Yeah? They are not interested in saying it as it is. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Yeah? That geezer, Keon, you're now irrelevant with your opinions, mate, because you are now not telling me your actual opinions on the football club. Yeah? So I don't need to hear from you ever again. Ian Wright tweeting Cronky out a couple of months back and then he's bowling out with the new Adidas drop. You are the biggest fan of Cronky, my friend. Yeah? Then he's, oh, we're happy to have you back at the game this weekend, guys. Blah, blah, blah. Where we belong. And it's got the fucking Emirates as the Owen belong. Of course you are, because you're charging 20 quid a pop. Yeah? Right, he's busting it out again. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's Cronky's biggest fan. Yeah, seriously. Ray Parler. Oh, cheers, guys. Cheers, guys, from Singapore. While I'm getting paid to be here to fucking chat shit. Fucking knobs. Absolutely sick to death of this club, mate. I'm sick of them. These people have not got our best interests at heart and they've played for the football club, which makes it even worse. Yeah, these journalists are a disgrace. They're a disgrace. Yeah? Do you think that people... Gunner Blog put an article out there comparing Varane to uh, Ben White. Oh, but Varane's going to cost X amount of money more because of his wages and they'll have no resale value. Why are we signing players to look to sell them in the future? Yeah, number one. Number two, the reason he's on more fucking wages, my friend, is because he has played for one of the biggest clubs in world football for a decade as a mainstay on their defence whilst winning absolutely everything. He signed at 18 for Real Madrid. Ben White was playing for Newport County on loan. There's a big difference, mate. Yeah, but you got to keep the perks, mate. You've got to keep the perks. Same as James Benj, Charles Watts, Chris Wheatley, David Ornstein telling us that, oh, yes, I don't like the way people are having to go with Aaron Ramsdale signing. Where was Edison and Allison at 23? Uh, winning doubles, mate. Yeah? One was winning a double and one was in goal for Brazil national team. Yeah? What's this guy done? Oh, yes, my bad. Relegated three times in four seasons. But I don't like it. Well, I don't care what you like, Ornstein. You're a fucking puppet. Yeah, sick to death of this football club, man. Everyone's got a conflict of interest. The only people who actually say it as it is about this football club are people that are not trying to get a fucking job off in the back of it. Yeah, it's a joke. Our fans, a lot of our fans are trying to write their shitty little articles with their lines and their arrows and their fucking XT and XA and XG and X fucking fuck off. Yeah, to try and get a job in the media. Yeah, sorry, mate. You're taking the piss. Yeah. And as for Harry Simeu, by the way, I, I never have to listen to that guy ever again from now on. He did a thing and it was out on Judges channel. Big up Judges and Dan Potts. Yeah, go and subscribe to them. Oh, people get me confused because when I say that, I think that this is what the club is going to do. They think it's my opinion. Well, how about get off the fucking fence then, Harry? Yeah, and actually give us your opinion, mate. Oh, but you can't, can you? Because you're millimetres away from getting the fucking question asked, asked by Mikel Arteta. Yeah, you're millimetres, mate, yeah? So now you can't, you can't give your opinion because now you've got your blue tick and you're that close to asking Mikel Arteta a question in a press conference, yeah? Why do people listen to these people? They ain't got our best interests at heart. They chat absolute rubbish, yeah? The only people, the only people that say it as it is within this fan base are people that are not looking to get a job off of the back of it, yeah? Everybody else, fuck off. Yeah. And I'll call them out all season. I'll highlight their crap all season because this football club is going down the fucking swanee real quick. Yeah. This football club is a disgrace, mate. Absolute disgrace. It is now just a PR machine and a fucking brand. Yeah. And a clothing brand at that. Yeah. It is disgusting what this fucking club is doing. But listen, let me read some of these out. And um, I'm going down the beach. I'm going to go and fucking chill. I'm dropping bodies everywhere this season. I don't give a fuck, mate. Yeah? I don't care. Right, he's blocked me on Insta and fucking Twitter. I don't give a shit what that guy's got to fucking say about me. Couldn't care less. That guy is Cronky's biggest fan. Yeah? Says Cronky out because he knows a million people. Go, oh, righty, club legend. He was my fucking hero as a kid. 
Yeah. Hero as a kid. I was the white Ian Wright in the playgrounds, mate. Yeah. That guy is a fucking shambles. I can't believe how he's gone on in the last five years. Yeah. Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah. Literally will say anything to get the next fucking merch drop. Unbelievable. Yeah. Ray Parler, anything to get the fucking next preseason tour. Martin Keon, desperate to get his foot back in, will say anything. Yeah. All these journalists lie through their teeth. Yeah. Only go off what the club tell them. They're supposed to be the link between us and that club, by the way. Instead, they're working for the club indirectly from the companies that they're working for. Oh, well, if you come into, into here and, and we give you a little snippet of information, you can peddle that out, yeah? Oh, we'll get you an exclusive with Josh or we'll get you an exclusive with Unai Emery or we'll get you an exclusive with Arteta. But you've all got to peddle that. And you can't ask this question. You can't ask that question. You can't say this. It is a disgrace. A disgrace. And this is our football club, not theirs. Yeah? Not theirs. It's our football club. Yeah, they all work for us, by the way. It's our football club. Claim our fucking club back, mate. Claim it back. I'm sick of it. Absolutely sick of it. Yeah, our fans are a shambles. Absolute shambolic. Yeah, shambolic. Fucking sick to death of it, man. I fucking love this club to bits. And fucking seeing this club destroyed, yeah, by people who couldn't give a fuck about this football club. Yeah. And people that just want to sit there and get a job off of the back of it so won't ever give their fucking opinions. Yeah. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting football club, mate. Yeah. Disgusting. I'm sick of it. Yeah. And I'm going to keep highlighting these fuckers all season. I don't care, mate. Yeah. I genuinely do not care. All right. Listen, I'm going to wrap this up. Apologies if I've missed anything. Um, apparently, Turkish is live. Um Apparently, Turkish is live. Before you go and watch Turkish, uh, spam his chat when you get in there. Just spam it, rat army. And um, yeah, I can't see any super chats that I've missed because the screen's crashed and it won't reload. Oh, no, it's reloaded. There we go. Let me quickly read this one out. Um, did I miss any? Nope, I haven't. Uh, let me read this one out that's just come in. Thank you very much for your generous donation, my guy. I'm fucking drained doing this stream. Do you know that? This is why I don't want to talk about football. So the pinned comment... Can everyone just go and follow that channel? There's 3,000 people still watching this. Just go and follow my vlog channel. Get me away from this fucking football club. Yeah. I'm going down the beach. I'll be vlogging down the beach. I'll be sipping on a nice beer. I'll probably have some nice food. And uh, I'll be talent spotting. Probably more fucking talent than this bunch of clowns I fucking find all summer. Uh, but there we go. Pina colada on the beach. Yes, my guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> this comment's made me laugh. Big up to you, buddy. But no, smash the likes up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you subscribe to the vlog channel. Go and spam Turkish's chat with Rat Army. Just go and spam it, Rat Army. Yeah. And again, another one that actually speaks sense. But guess what? He ain't trying to get a job at a fucking football club or on Sky Sports. He ain't trying to be, oh, yes, now we've got super fan on Sky Sports from so-and-so, so-and-so. Oh, what do you think of the transfer business? Who cares? Yeah. Oh, but I'm on Sky Sports. I'll put it in my bio on my fucking Twitter account. You fucking idiots. Yeah. It's not about getting your mug on Sky Sports. It's not about getting your mug in the fucking media. It's not about getting your fucking mug. Yeah. On the fucking Arsenal program or anything like that. Yeah. It's about this football club doing what they promised us we were moving to this stadium for. Yeah. How about start realizing that? Yeah. Instead of trying to get a fucking job off of the back of our fucking club, start saying it as it is. Wankers. Big up to you, voice of facts. Thank you very much, my guy. Come on. Very generous donation as well. Appreciate it, man. I'm fucking sweating. Honestly, I'm fucking... I've done an hour. I wanted to do half an hour. I've literally eaten into my fucking beach time, man. I might be back later. I don't know. I don't know if I can be fucking asked. I might just have the next couple of days off. This club is finished. Yeah, I genuinely can't be asked to talk about football. I really can't. It fucking angers me, as you can see, for the last hour. Just go and get that vlog channel up as quick as you can to 60k, 50k, 40k. As soon as it starts earning decent dough, I'm fucking this off. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of it. Uh, but thank you very much. That's a very generous donation. Um, my honey boss. Thank you very much, mate. Loving the passion. Thank you, man. Listen, I've got more passion in my body about this football club than all of these fucking ex-players twerking for their little fucking paycheck. Yeah, despite playing for the fucking football club, no one can tell me that these ex-players that are on the fucking payroll, yeah, are sitting there as angry and as pissed off with this football club as I am. Yeah, they're not. 
because they're getting paid a fucking nice little chunk of change to keep fucking sweet, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucking joke. Yeah, it's a joke. This club is a disgrace. Yeah, it's our football club. Claim it back, people. Claim it fucking back. Uh, I'm a Man United fan, but you're spitting facts. Love your passion. Thank you, Greg Star, man. Listen, if more people had my attitude, mate, these bastards wouldn't be in a fucking job. Yeah, and this club would be challenging for top honours like they told us we were moving from Highbury for. Yeah, any of these ex-players that are on the payroll that have played at Highbury and have gone through the whole transition and have come into this stadium, they should be ashamed when they look in the mirror, ashamed of themselves, that they're twerking for this shit. And they know damn well what is going on at that football club. They know full well what is going on at that football club. But because they're getting a little pocket change, yeah, have another fucking bit of, have another bit of money, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need you to wheel out another shirt right here. Yeah, we are, mate. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah, start saying it as it is, people. Yeah, because I'm going to say it all season. I'm sick to death of all these people on the take. Yeah, they're all on the take. Yeah, they don't care, man. They genuinely don't care. What they care about is a bit of that. And oh, look at me. I get a free fucking dinner. Fuck off. Anyway. <laughs> boycott everything. Boycott the whole lot, mate. Boycott it. Yeah, boycott it. I'm going to go and watch fucking Sevilla this season. Fuck Arsenal, man. Yeah. It's a disgrace. So thank you for that, my guy, uh, Suresh. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. I'm absolutely sick to death of it. Sick to death of it. Subscribe to Lee Gunner. Thank you. Thank you very much. 1.2K likes, people. Thank you, man. Listen, big up to Jez as well in the chat, man. I, I didn't even read the comment. Ugh, fucking, mate, my head's all over the place after doing this stream. I'm fucking seething. Where is that comment? Let me see if I can find it again. Uh, there it is. Uh, this is worse than what I saw at the club in the mid-70s. There you go. There you go. There you go. It's a disgrace. Mate, at least in the 70s, players weren't twerking for fucking shirt drops and pre-season tours, mate. Yeah? Oh, I can't publicly criticise the club because my name's Martin Keown. Why can't you publicly criticise it? Paul Merson, by the way. Paul Merson, yeah? If you ever stumble across this stream, my friend. Yeah? You, my friend a fucking legend because you have said everything as it is for years you ain't trying to get a job at arsenal i don't care if you're a chelsea fan i fucking love you mate my company that i used to work for selling double glazing sold windows to your old man mate yeah so if they've gone shit don't come after me <laughs> but i love you mass i fucking love him i love that geezer mate he don't care and he says it right which is why our muggy little fan base can't take it because they have people like the others that I've mentioned twerking for the football club. Oh, but yeah, but this is all right. And that's all right. And this is fine. And that's fine. No, it ain't. Mercer's had it nailed on for years. Yeah. And so is that other geezer that everyone hates, that Adrian Durham. He's had it spot on for years as well. Yeah. He knows what time it is at this football club, mate. Yeah. Most people do. Most of these ex-players that are twerking for the football club right now, that are working at the club, getting their little kickback, they know what's going on. Yeah. I know they know what's going on. Yeah, but they ain't going to come out and say it because they won't get their next little 10 grand paycheck. Do you know what I mean? It's a disgrace. Chill, mate. Take care of yourself and your family. This club is currently a joke full of hypocrites, thieves, and arrogance. See you next Tuesdays. Thank you very much, man. Is that is that Egyptian? Are you, are you from Egypt, my friend? I've been to Egypt, if that is. Is that Egypt? I don't know. Uh, but listen, thank you very much to everyone who's watched. Thank you for that generous donation as well, buddy. And to everyone who's put a like on the video, everyone who's put a donation in, anyone who's down the video up the video anyone who's subscribed to the channel anyone who's subscribed to the vlog channel um i need to go and chill i need to breathe Whew. and uh, i'm sure this stream will get um will get demonetized for all the swearing as well so if, if you could just keep pumping the likes up so it just gets the traction instead of the uh, the money off the back of it in terms of the ad revenue uh, that would be great um so thank you very much go and spam turkish's chat with rat army Rat Army sent Rat Army sent me, or just Rat Army, uh, Rat Army takeover. Do whatever you got to do. But listen, thank you very much, man. Appreciate all the love, and uh, I'm out of here. I'll be back again later, maybe. Um, I'm going to get some food later. Edu out. All these ex fucking players out as well. Every bastard out. Later. <laughs>